Welcome. You have entered the realm of 1111 Talk Radio. Your host is Simron. It's time to discover your own language with the universe. Empower yourself, broaden your mind, open your heart, and discover who you are. Now, here's your host, Simron. Welcome. It is a pleasure to be with you this week, and we're going to have a great conversation because we're going to be talking about some things that I absolutely love to talk about. It's very easy to get caught up in the heaviness of the world because that kind of is screaming in our faces all of the time from many different directions. But there's also a lot of beauty and good in the world. There's a lot of magic and interconnection. And my journey into spirituality and through self-awareness began with series of signs that were starting with the numbers 1111. And the universe was speaking to me as I talk about in my first book, Conversations with the Universe, and my subsequent book, Signs. The universe is always speaking, and it is speaking in powerfully wonderful ways. But at that time, that was something that a lot of people kept in the closet, or many people didn't even talk very much about. But now, it is becoming more of a conversation, a deeper, larger conversation that people are wanting to speak of because they're feeling it, they're seeing it, they're sensing it, they're knowing it. And another conversation that I have loved talking about over the years that I'm starting to discover is becoming more commonplace is the favorite thing in the world that I love to do, and that is doing more nothing. (laughs) Today, we are going to talk about both of those things, and I cannot wait because my guest, Kim Chesney, says the universe is always speaking to you through serendipitous events, moments of inspiration, gut feelings, epiphanies, and intuitive knowingness. Life has a fundamental system of communicating in a deeply personal way. Our ancestors knew it. Artists, geniuses, innovators, teachers— and gifted intuitives of all kinds know this. Intuition, the extraordinary ability to access information from the quantum realms, is fast becoming humanity's most advanced form of knowledge acquisition. Her book, The Illumination Code, presents seven keys to unlock your inner dimension so you can access expanded states of awareness that exist beyond the limits of the rational mind. Kim Chesney reveals the deeply personal nature of the universe while offering a new way to know the unknowable and experience the seemingly impossible. As you venture inward on this step-by-step journey, you gain profound insights and discover the true power of your own inner wisdom. Kim Chesney is the author of The Illumination Code, Radical Intuition, and the Psychic Workshop, and as the founder of Intuition Lab and the Create Festival, her work raises awareness about the importance of insights in the evolution of individual and world consciousness. Working for nearly 20 years in the tech sector, Kim has led initiatives with some of the top thought leaders, technology companies, and universities in the world. You can find out more about her and everything that she's doing at intuition-lab.com. But without further ado, I want to welcome you, Kim, to 1111 Talk Radio. Oh, thanks so much for having me here today, Simran. I'm so excited to talk with you about all this fun stuff. It is fun stuff because there is magic in the world. Mm -hmm. And we each do have this connectivity if we are open to it. And you talk about it being this faculty of insight as a built-in technology. Mm -hmm. Tell us how that gives us access to information and energy that helps create the building blocks of this world. Yeah, I think that, you know, part of my mission has really been to raise awareness of intuition as something that's a very natural embedded cognitive function. I I think over the years, intuition has sort of been marginalized as well as a lot of different things (laughs) that it's really not. But ultimately what we're learning now through science and physics and innovation and and really the progress of our culture is that intuition is actually like a key technology built into our system that allows us to go beyond the thinking minds in some really extraordinary ways. So looking at our sort of everyday mind, the linear logical mind, 
as sort of having its purview in this three-dimensional world that we live in of cause and effect and matter and and uh, stuff and things, we can also, in contrast, start to look at intuition as that part of us that goes beyond all that, that has access to that deep dimension within us where all wisdom is held, the key to being extraordinary, to doing extraordinary things, to tapping into this sort of deeper potential of the human mind. We have things in common in that we like to both speak about the ways of synchronicity and signs and this intuitive guidance that comes through the world. And what I've noticed in many people, and perhaps you have too, is we're so outer focused, so distracted, so caught up in the outside world that there are many people that don't have access or have not tapped into this unique potential within themselves. Can you speak a little bit about how you see this outer world distraction either pointing the way towards our intuition or perhaps pulling us out of our power of intuition? Yeah, 100%. It, 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 is, um, it really creates a static that prevents us, the way I understand it, from hearing and receiving our intuition because uh, intuition is a natural function. All we need to do to use it is open up to receive it. We don't have to necessarily you know, get a PhD or sit on a mountaintop. We just need to open up space. And the problem with our culture today is we're in this mind-heavy culture where we feel like we have to be busy, busy, busy doing, thinking, trying, achieving, all of those things, which create uh, this, this, this constant static that prevents our intuition from dropping in and naturally guiding us the way it's meant to. So stepping back, um, you know, the mindfulness movement, I think, has been really key to this understanding that we need to pull back from our phones and social media and, you know, our really busy schedules create more white space on our calendar. Do nothing like it's your job, I always tell people, because it's one of the most valuable things in the world you can do is to be still, to open space. Just go for a walk, take that long shower, go for a drive. Think about the times when you've had those best ideas or those solutions or the, or even remember things, things that just drop into your mind. Not while you're sitting at your desk, you know, answering emails or scrolling through social media. It's when you have those aimless moments, when your mind is open and fertile for those intuitive insights to drop in. Now, you talk about uh, both psychic and intuition. And is there a distinction between these two? Because everyone is psychic, correct? And everyone has intuition. But how do they connect or how are they different? Yeah, great question. And I really set out to answer that question uh, with my book, Radical Intuition, which was really, you know, I came, I came to that book with a question of what really is intuition? Because there's so many different manifestations of it. Is it psychic ability? Is it creative ability? Is it physical sensations, gut feelings, is it, you know, premonitions, you know, ability to uh, read people's minds, all these things we talk about that we call label supernatural. Um, how does that all tie together? And, and really with radical intuition, I discovered there is sort of a holistic framework to understanding that this, this connection, this interconnection we have to our deep dimension manifests in so many different ways throughout our life. And everybody sort of has their unique wiring for it. You know, some people, it speaks to their bodies and their gut feelings. Other people have really strong senses of inner guidance and knowingness. Other people uh, have heart callings and passions and, and senses of being moved to do things with their intuition, inspiration, creativity, leadership, innovation, ingenuity, all of that stuff. And then, then there's also this sort of mystical dimension of intuition where we see impossible things happen through psychic ability and through um, communion with our divine nature. So uh, all of this stuff sort of wraps up to show how intuition is this really holistic um, way of receiving guidance from the higher dimension, the deeper dimension within us, that part of us that that really knows everything. You know, speaking of intuition and synchronicity and this interconnectedness that we all have, uh, my latest trilogy is very profoundly centered on seven blessings, seven graces, and seven illusions. And your book is Seven Keys. Mm -hmm. And I'm also noticing that there are many other authors and seven is popping up a lot more, which is a highly spiritual number of awakening and awareness and deep presence with oneself. That to me was really, really interesting. 
Mm. But it's not a coincidence. And you talk about in the book that there really are no coincidences, which is something that I've always said as well. Give me your perspective on how there really are no coincidences. Yeah, I think that's 100% true. It's this idea, the seven just sort of came to me intuitively, right? I didn't plan that out or strategize it. When we're working in tandem with our deep dimension, with our intuitive nature, uh, we, we find ourselves connected to this wholeness that other people are also participating in. So when we look at this idea, and, and now um, physics and mysticism are really connecting and with this idea of a quantum field. So uh, you know, science is showing us uh, through the, the revolution that's happened in quantum physics over the last 200 years, that we're not disconnected people, that we think, oh, it's a coincidence. I think of my friend and they happen to call me on the phone. How is that even possible? Because we're two separate objects and we don't interact. But what science is showing us is there is a non-local quantum field that connects all things invisibly, sort of like an internet uh, between every uh, point of consciousness. So when you think of that friend, there's a little part of you that pinged that friend and that the, 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 your two deeper selves are connecting on some level. And that's why they call you when you think of them, or that's why you happen to run into a friend at the store, or you say something that uh, someone you're with is about to say. So there's all these ways that synchronicity and serendipity and coincidence all really naturally play in to this idea of a connected universe that our intuition plays this really crucial part in. Now, Illumination Key 1 unlocks the gateway to our quantum dimension, and Illumination Key 2 reconnects the inner information highway. But quantum physics, or thinking about science in the way that it's often spoken of, for some people that's going to go over their head, mm. for others that's a lofty concept, and it doesn't really connect to their body or their uh, own spiritual understanding. Can you kind of link the quantum physics to what that means practically for us as individuals so that we ground into something as a part of this deeper understanding? Yeah, and that was really my purpose in writing this book because you know after Radical Intuition came out and people really started to activate their intuition in new ways in their life and, and experience it more. Because intuition is, it's not something we just have to wait for it to show up. You know, it's something that that we can cultivate with our time and intention is attention and creating spaciousness in our life. So when people started to experience you know, some of these magical things that intuition leads us to, I kept getting the question, how is it possible? What's actually happening? How is it possible for me to know something uh, that what someone else is doing on the other side of the earth or someone's thinking of me and they're far away? How do I, how's it possible for me to sense that? So that was the question that I came into the illumination code with. And, you know, eventually it, it led me ultimately to, um, to this idea of quantum physics, which I've always had a passion for uh, since I was young. And I think I kind of realized it when I started writing this book as to why intuitively because this is really the point where spirituality and science at last come together and are actually using different words for the same language. So this, uh, this idea of a quantum field is actually harkened back to the Bhagavad Gita. You can see in the 13th book of the Bhagavad Gita, they, there's a whole passage where Krishna is talking about the knower in the field and perfectly describing this quantum field that we now know through science exists. Uh, so, so my whole uh, goal with writing this book was to boil down all of those really sort of impersonal concepts of quantum physics and let people know that we're personally experiencing quantum physics in our life. This really isn't just some scientific uh, concepts for you know people who have PhDs and who've studied this for their whole life. Quantum physics is alive within us. And we feel it through our intuition. Intuition itself is a quantum function. And all of these impossible things throughout history that they say we can't do, right? Supernatural things, mystical things, all of these things are now explainable through quantum physics and prove to us that intuition is actually a really valuable, learnable, repeatable uh, cognitive function. So I really want to raise awareness of intuition as something not to be afraid of, something not to marginalize, but something that we really need to embrace to step into our full potential as human beings and live better, clearer, happier lives. And throughout the book, you do have so many wonderful exercises to step-by-step -step assist individuals in tapping into how their intuitive awareness has already been present in very subtle ways. I think that's 
a beautiful way for individuals to experience themselves through this particular book, The Illumination Code. You also write that mystics experience what scientists study. (laughs) And you write that information is present throughout space and time. It's present at the same time everywhere. Again, my latest trilogy was more of a mystical experience where all of the downloads came through. And it was also experiential through my life to have this understanding that the identity, the shadow, and the higher self are always existing at the same time, as well as our past, our future, and our present. And you write about this in the book, where you talk about cosmic information, building, connecting, and guiding our world. Speak about how there's no time and how we must move to the place of no mind to access the state of timelessness. Yeah, it's really a revolutionary way of looking at reality. And I think this is what spirituality is calling us to do. It's what science is calling us to do. It's like the famous quote goes, if, if, if quantum physics hasn't profoundly shocked you, you haven't understood it yet. It's calling us really to these deeply spiritual concepts of oneness and timelessness and, and the recognition that everything that's happening, past, present, and future, is happening in the eternal now. And we access it through the eternal now. And, and what do we get when we move into that presence and spaciousness of the eternal now? We get a portal for our intuition to drop in and to connect with that wisdom that's embedded in that quantum field all around us, accessible any place, any time. We don't have to go anywhere uh, to, to receive it. We don't have to do any special rituals to receive it. It's, it's within us. It's part of us. So really this idea that we uh, really can move into our into inner wisdom as a really natural part of living every day of our life. We're, l- we're living and learning from a higher place. The intuition, you know, our everyday minds can see what seems to be right in front of us and, and what's behind us. But with our intuition, we can transcend the boundaries of this space-time bubble that we're living in and see all of that ever-present information. So, And that even gets back to the idea of the Akashic Records. If, if you're familiar with that concept, it's, you know, there's this idea of a hall of records that you walk in and it's this beautiful library or compendium, all the events that have ever happened, the record of your soul's journey and every other soul's journey. And this is something in spirituality, particularly spiritualism, when, when it came into popularity over the last couple hundred years, they realized, well, this actually works. You go into this hall of record, visualize it, And you can pull down all of this information. But what people didn't realize is that, you know, 200 years ago, we didn't understand quantum physics at all. We didn't have computers. We didn't understand the idea of an internet or hard drives or or any kind of electronic storage. Uh, So back then, the only way that they really could imagine storing information, the best way, would be through books, right? So it was a metaphor, this idea of the Kashuk records, the spiritual experience of reading these records. But really what people were doing is reading the quantum field, the Akashic field all around us and within us. And and this uh, ritual was sort of a beautiful visualization practice to enter in to that field. So this is something human beings have known for a very long time that we're able to do this. And now we, when we say we can do this, we're armed with actual scientific evidence that this is this is now something in the realm of possibility. This isn't something we're making up. This isn't something, some woo-woo thing that's like some miraculous uh, piece of information that came through. No, it's natural and anyone can do it. And all of this, everything is here in the present now, able to be uh, tapped into, learned from, and really used to elevate our lives and, and the future of humanity, I think. I love a concept that you share in the book where you talk about thinking being the outer processing of the macrocosm and intuition being the inner processing of our own microcosm. And so often I think people get so caught up in that thinking or analyzing or strategizing, especially in the Western world, that that outer focus keeps us goal setting, keeps us driven, keeps us working and toiling where there is no space to truly understand what the soul really desires, what our hearts really want. Is that part of the reason that we create this complexity in our lives? And is that the interference that has so much of the turmoil that does show up as duality appear in the world? 
Yeah, because we are, we're living ultimately this bubble of reality that we're living in that, you know, we take for granted. We think we live in a material world, a physical world, but really these physical objects are just densification of matter and energy and information. Uh, so it is it is kind of like the illusion of Maya that, that we hear about in the ancient scriptures that we live in, but we take it for granted and we think it's, you know, seeing is believing and and touching is real, but that's not really the case. It was what we're finding out now through physics. So when we get too caught up in this world and living, you know, by the sort of linear mind, the sort of conditioned mind, right? So, so this, it comes back to this sort of dynamic and interplay between, tr- are we going to trust ourselves and, and trust our inner guidance and what we in our heart of hearts know we're made for and built for? Or are we going to listen to the conditioning of the world around us, telling us who we are, what we can do and what we can't do, and really sort of um, developing that inner critic also that uh, that makes us really doubt ourselves sometimes and our egos and, and all those different voices in our head. So one of the things that, you know I talk about with people is part of learning to develop your intuition is knowing what voice in your head to follow because we don't just have one voice in our head. I, I wish that it was that simple um, because our intuition is our true voice, our the voice that comes to us that, from that place of peace and power and and timelessness. You know, but there are these other voices that it competes with, our inner critic, our conditioning, our fears, all of our hopes and aspirations and the things we think that we want for ourselves. But uh, really starting to live by your intuition means making that shift away from the outside world, away from the conditioned mind, the ego mind, and into trusting that true self, that true authentic being that's driving you from within. And it might not always take you where you think you're supposed to go, but it'll take you where you need to go to get to where your soul really needs to be for its journey. So moving into a state of trust with life and trust with yourself and walking that walk and recognizing that you are in the loving embrace of the universe with every step you take, even though it might not seem like rationally like it's the right step. Um, it really takes us into the the place, the true place on our journey that we need to be in. And that's something I found out working in technology because, you know, there's all this strategy and all of this sort of um, this, this thinking, this sort of left brain thinking that was going on. And then all of a sudden, I start hearing people talk about intuition and how intuition is so important when you are uh, innovating and when you're creating new things and when you're you're creating these these sort of revolutionary uh, um, products and things that can really be game changers in the world. And, and it's really about learning to tune into that inner genius like Einstein, Tesla, Steve Jobs, all of these people huge advocates of intuition as the source of of their inner genius and creativity and really uh, unparalleled ideas. So intuition is really about tuning back into yourself, following yourself, not the world. That's how you do great and extraordinary things. Part of that expansion intuition sometimes does need to use our intellect in being willing to explore possibility, to understand that something bigger is out there. And in our world, especially in spirituality, some words are used so much that they lose meaning or they become more of a superficial, fantasized version of what that means. Light can be one of those words. And you write that in science, too, light is at the center of the magic, that we are this holographic principle and that we are this cosmic information that is stored in patterns of light that can actually be read like a code. Mm. For individuals looking at themselves and being told that they are light from the spiritual perspective, not only will they see what looks dense and kind of void that thought of light, but sometimes we are so dense intellectually (laughs) that we don't allow that thought of light in. You Mm. have a wonderful exercise in the book where you tell people to close their eyes. What happens when we really close our eyes? Do we see light or do we see darkness? Yeah, I love that exercise. And, um, you know, I I designed this book because I wanted people to actually practice these things and experience them for themselves. Don't just take it from me, right? So uh, this seemed like a great way to introduce folks to the the really idea of creating these little experiments uh, for yourself. So when we close our eyes, most people think it's darkness. But if you actually pay attention, there's a lot going on. There's light all kinds of patterns of light, colors, interaction, movement, right? So so there's this whole dynamic world inside our eyes that we we sort of just sort of tune out. 
And when we realize we are actually bodies of light, it connects us to this deeper idea. And this is really where the title of the book comes from, The Illumination Code, is when you know I went down this rabbit hole with 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 quantum physics and really learned that you know the world isn't made of stuff and things. If you boil down everything from the the molecules to the atoms to the particles and the quanta, what it ends up being built of is codes of information and energy that is stored in light. So we can look at light as this sort of information carrying medium. We see fiber optics. We see this in our own world and the internet and the cables that transfer light and information instantaneously, right? It's very similar to what's happening inside us with, with our inner light bodies when our intuition can read this information that we're actually built up. We don't realize it because we have these bodies that look physical, but if you break them down to their smallest bits and pieces, they're actually built of light and information. So it's a beautiful way of understanding the human body and our real connection to our inner light. So the more light we bring in, the more light we feel, the more we energize that intuitive connection with the eternal part of our being. Your information highway is a two-way street, running from local consciousness to non-local consciousness from the material reality around you to the immaterial reality within you, and vice versa. The relay from your local mind begins with an active intention, such as remembering or intuitively thinking. Conversely, you receive the relay from the non-local field of mind as a passive download, such as a moment of insight or genius, gut feeling, knowingness, or revelation. The Illumination Code is a guide for personally experiencing the magic of the quantum universe. It offers the missing pieces of the cosmic puzzle, revealing how the seemingly vast impersonal laws of physics are in actuality supremely personal. All of it was built for you. Every scientific principle, every rule, field, force, particle, and bit of information is alive within you, working to support your existence. As you begin to activate your latent powers of intrinsic awareness, the innate intuitive function that connects you with the quantum dimension, you can touch the magic of the microcosmic realities from the inside. This is from the book The Illumination Code, Seven Keys to Unlock Your Quantum Intelligence by Kim Chesney, who is also the author of Radical Intuition and The Psychic Workshop. She is the founder of Intuition Lab and the Create Festival, and you can find out more about her at intuition-lab.com. She has year-round classes and workshops that you can access there, and once again, pick up your copy of The Illumination Code. We'll be right back after these messages with Kim Chesney. And remember, life is meaningful, and there is no such thing as a coincidence. Voice America at Facebook.com forward slash Voice America for juicy updates from your favorite radio shows and podcasts. Have you seen 1111? Do you wonder why certain numbers keep showing up in your life? 11, 111, 22, 33, 444. People all over the world are seeing 1111 and learning the language of universal communication. Subscribe to 1111 Magazine today, www.1111mag.com. 1111 Magazine is a bi-monthly print publication that offers a rich, multi-sensory experience. As you engage with experts and topics of consciousness, become enlightened, empowered, and energized so you live a passionate and authentic life of conscious choices. 1111 Magazine, a daily staple for lifting the mindset, discovering the heart, and stepping into conscious living. 1111 Magazine. Order now at www.1111mag.com. 1111mag.com. Do you want more, more joy, more abundance, more power and presence? How would it feel to have more loving relationships, more empowered community, greater fulfillment and life purpose? The 1111 Mastermind Community inspires, empowers, guides and supports transformation. Shift your mind, expand your heart, 
deep in insights. Let go and chart a new course. Dream a new dream. The 1111 Mastermind Community is an online portal for personal transformation and soulful expansion. Go to courses.1111mag.com. That's courses.1111mag.com. Change begins with you. Let it be simple, convenient, and transformative. The time is now. Step through the 1111 gateway. Courses.1111mag.com. Live up to your fullest potential. This is the Voice America Empowerment Channel. You are listening to 1111 Talk Radio. Simron is an award-winning author, publisher of 1111 Magazine, powerful speaker of wisdom, and a life mentor. Find out more at IamSimron.com. Now, back to 1111 Talk Radio. Before we get back to Kim Chesney and her wonderful book, The Illumination Code, I want to mention my own trilogy, Living the Seven Blessings of Human Experience, Being the Seven Illusions that Derail Personal Power, Purpose, and Peace, and Knowing the Seven Human Expressions of Grace. These are sacred oracles that you open to and allow yourself to receive a short message every day. The books are written very densely, so if you try to read them from cover to cover, you probably will have to just take bite-sized pieces. So oftentimes I recommend individuals to open each book and just read one paragraph. You will get the message that the universe wants you to hear. Living is your identity. It's your personality. It's your ego in the world. And that book will speak to that part of you. Being is your shadow nature, your animal, and even that monster inside that sometimes wants to growl. And that will speak to your shadow nature. And knowing is the part of you that is humanity. And that will speak to the reclaiming of your humanity. And when you allow yourself to touch each piece of you, knowing that they are always active all of the time, you remain in a state of wholeness, serving each aspect of you to bring your full self to the world. In Kim Chesney's book, she talks about this phenomenon of how we can retrieve information from the universe. In her book, The Illumination Code, Seven Keys to Unlock Your Quantum Intelligence, she has multiple exercises and experiments that allow you to tap into your intuition. And one of those is actually book hacking, where she says, since the intuitive part of your mind has access to all of the information in the universe, including the contents of every page in a book, when you randomly open to a page in a book, There is nothing random about it. Just like there is nothing random about choosing the right oracle card, your deeper mind is choosing for you, informing your mind and body as it guides you to the perfect message for you in that moment in time. Again, you can find out more about Kim Chesney and all of her books, The Illumination Code, Radical Intuition, and The Psychic Workshop by going to intuition-lab.com. Check out the other workshops and classes she has as well while you're there. Welcome back, Kim. Let's talk a little bit about that, how we can somehow connect to information, whether it's a book or a deck of cards or simply allowing ourselves to be open and present enough in a space of perhaps doing more nothing, drinking our tea, taking a walk, that we tap into this universe of experience and wisdom that is there for us. Yeah, one of the um, important mindset shifts, and I think each key in this book sort of taps into different mindset shifts to get into this sort of um, lifestyle of insightfulness, I call it, cultivating insightfulness every day where we're constantly checking in with ourselves and receiving guidance from our inner dimension. Uh, But the first real mind shift shift for this is recognizing that we do have this part of us that knows everything or has access to all of the wisdom of the universe. And and that is embedded within us. And we are uh, connected to that at all times. So uh, I love this practice of um, book hacking. And that's a great thing like you could do with any book, a a sacred book that you have that something, an inspirational book. Uh, a part of you knows what's on every single page in that book and knows just the right page to go to to give you that guiding message for the day. And 
And I also created uh, insight cards to, to practice this as well as when you uh, invoke this idea of sacred seeing where you look at a picture and you, you let an image speak to you with its guiding wisdom, uh, your intuition will, will use whatever it can to help you receive those, those signals of guidance and recognize those moments of synchronicity and serendipity and the signs on our pathway. Um, so from our inside, you know, the inside we receive intuition through thoughts and feelings and sensations and and guidance. And then on the outside, we recognize our intuition through those signs and synchronicities that are there sort of as punctuation marks on our journey or as validations that we're living in a magical universe where so much more is possible than we generally think. Illumination key number three is where you help expand individuals' awareness beyond the limits of reality. And then illumination key number four is where you help them open their mind to the timeless wisdom stored in the cosmos. And we've touched on a little bit of that. You say in the book, whatever you do and wherever you go in life, you are in a constant state of interplay with this all-knowing part of your being. And that means that we are always with every part of ourselves. I have this thought or have had this philosophy myself that we are not on a journey, we are the journey that we're not in the world, we're actually every piece and part of the world speaking mm. back to us, and that we are actually the divine one looking through a set of eyes, uh, and that divine one is looking through eight billion set of eyes, mm. so we're actually that one. Is this ultimately the truth that quantum physics is trying to bring us to? Yeah, I do think that that is where um, we're going with our understanding of consciousness, this unity is more than just a um, you know popularized notion. This oneness and unity behind all things is now something that is part of contemporary science. And we're witnessing things that, that we never thought were possible are now possible with that unity and recognizing that this world that's made of information, you know, talking about this information embedded in light, what it all adds up to is not a universe that's built of matter, of stuff and things. It's a universe that's built of consciousness. So when we take pause and reflect on that and what that means, that consciousness not just only creates the world, but is the world, and that we're all just little points of that greater consciousness, uh, having this ability to perceive each other and to pretend that we're separate, to have these interactions in this playground of life, it becomes a beautiful, wonder, wondrous, magical place. And that's why developing your intuition, one of the biggest side effects when you start to witness these things and realize that there is magic in the world. They were right when you were a kid. This is a world where magic is possible and wonder is everywhere. It helps us to rediscover that childlike wonder of life because we get so desensitized and we think we know everything around us and trees and, and roads and mountains and sky. But when you really step back from that and recognize that there that you're living in this interconnected world of consciousness and co-creation suddenly it all kind of takes on this new dimension and and becomes a whole new reality to explore and play with you write in the book our binary nature gives us the experience of being an individual a one but it also gives us a sense of dislocation from our source zero being the other to something is a state of separateness and so I know in Hindu scripture and in many of the sacred traditions, uh, it is expressed that we can opt out of this duality, that we can actually leave this wheel of karma or this idea of cause and effect. Mm. Does the intuitive awareness and living more in that state allow an individual to step out of that wheel of constant change and contrast? When, yeah, when you get to this place with your intuition where you sort of live in tandem with the way, when things uh, start to become more one than separate, then I do feel like that's when we're making that shift off that karmic wheel because everything in this world is duality. Everything is the the one and the zero, the something and the other. That's that That's how our brains work. We really don't know how to conceive of anything otherwise. It's, it's why it's so difficult for us to truly understand oneness because we're so used to understanding light from the contrast with darkness and right and soft from the contrast with hard or all of these different options help us to understand you know it's complement right it's the yin and the yang and 
And so it is a beautiful duality. But at the same time, that duality is part of this sort of secondary world. The original world, the source world, world the ground state, is the state of oneness and, and entanglement uh, that, that we are sort of living in both worlds. There's the, the intuitive dimension is the dimension that can know the oneness and feel the oneness between all things. While our, our intellectual, rational, logical mind allows us to work with a duality. So they're really beautiful complements. So it's not about one way is better than the other. It's just that we've spent so long, so many centuries developing our thinking minds and getting so smart, but we've forgotten about this really beautiful, nascent genius mind that is that is tied into our intuition. And now it is time to rebalance that. And I think when both sides of our brains are working together, when we use our intuitive mind and our highly evolved thinking mind, together as a complementary force, then we have the real potential to see what, what we can do as human beings. That's when we're really going to step into this sort of next dimension of awareness and consciousness and, and see what we're capable of. Illumination key number five teaches us the secrets of quantum intelligence. And you write, how exciting to think that your life is so meaningful that it comes with a built-in guidance system designed to speak to you personally and how comforting to realize that at all times, even in your darkest moments or aloneness. And I do believe that there are many people that are out there thinking that they're alone, believing that they're by themselves, believing that they are separate, or living in this space where even if they're surrounded by people, they feel a sense of aloneness. And social media has contributed to that, Fear has contributed to that. There are a lot of reasons that that might exist for individuals. So moving from this place of aloneness to having this understanding of this interconnectedness and this built-in guidance system is a way to really probably move into key number six, which is empowering us to do impossible things. How do we activate these medicines so that we really ground and embody this idea that we're not alone. Yeah, and that's one of the you know the downsides of living in a dualistic world is that the, the sense of separation, and I think that sense of separation really is core to so much. Uh, you know, uh, many of the the mental health issues that we see today are feelings of loneliness, depression, anxiety, fear, right? Because we've lost that connection that we are safe, and that even if bad things happen, it's okay, because, you know, things happen for a reason, and it's all part of the expansion of consciousness, and that we are held in that loving embrace of the universe, no matter what happens to us. So, you know, we are in this space of, of separateness, but our intuition is always calling us back to that wholeness. That's what those little nudges are. That's when you have that little thought that pops into your head, or this, oh, I should go and do this, or I should make amends with this person, or I should really go and cultivate this creative skill, or I really should spend some more time with my family. All these little nudges that we get in our life, it's our intuition trying to bring us back to that state of wholeness, that state of connectedness, that so that we can actually enjoy this world of duality without the fear, without the sadness, uh, without all the things that comes from feeling like we're separate. So once we start to really trust, and it really, it really ultimately, I keep saying this, but it comes back to trusting ourselves and trusting in life. And when we, in, instead of thinking that we can figure out everything on our own and that we have control and we have to get it all right, moving into that trust with our inner self and our inner guidance, that we are being led in the right direction. And we do have this beautiful um, inner guidance system that was made just for us. Everyone's unique. There's no two inner guidance systems that are saying the same thing. This is personal. It's just for you. And when you tune into it and you listen to it, the walls start to come down and you start to recognize the connectedness and feel the connectedness in ways that, you know, in everyday life, we've really shut ourselves off to. So these impossible things start to happen more and more. Yeah, this is a secret. The more you tune into your intuition, the more you look for those signs. I know you know this, Simran. The more you lean into them and energize them with your thoughts and attention, the more they happen. <laughs> it's very much related to how much energy we put into this and, and really open up to that sort of inpouring of interconnection and sacred, um, really deep wisdom that we hold within ourselves. I kind of liken the intuition and, and what I'm hearing you speak of it as 
our own superhero or supernatural being that we have within ourselves. And every superhero has a nemesis. <laughs> and ours is more than likely our ego or the deceptive intelligence that is this amazing escape artist and detractor that can step into our lives. And I find that, and perhaps you have found that with the Intuition Lab and the courses that you teach, so often because we are goal-driven and because of perhaps not doing the work of understanding that our presence is enough, individuals will want to tap into psychic abilities or intuition or senses for the sake of performing or mm. going to do something with it or trying to experience something like a vision or this, that, or the other to, I guess, feel a sense of significance or power or importance. Can you talk a little bit about how to really ground in the worth and presence of oneself for a greater purpose of mm. intuition rather than the superficial need that sometimes the ego will convince us of? If I had a dollar for every person that asked me if, if I could show them how to win the lottery, <laughs> I would be a rich woman. And it's it's one of those things that, you know, I couldn't agree more with what you're saying because, and I have to go in and explain when this kind of thing happens, that uh, it's not performative. I mean, intuition is not about, it's not going to give us what we want. Intuition is going to connect us to our truth and to the true path and to our wholeness. I mean, if if our path to wholeness means winning the lottery, then yeah, maybe we'll use our intuition to win the lottery. But it's not about the money. It's not about uh, prosperity and the stuff and the things and the goals and the power. It's just about our return to wholeness. And your intuition is there. It's your best friend. It's your true guide. No matter how many mistakes we make, our intuition's always going to be there to put us back on that pathway to wholeness. So recognizing that, you know, it, it has a truly sacred nature. It is our sacred guide. It's there to whisper, shout, and roar us back to that true state that we really want instead of uh, really enabling us to do uh, these sort of superficial things that might either, you know, feed our egos or give us creature comforts or make us feel less anxious or depressed or, you know, whatever it is we think we need in this world. So at the end of the day, you know, we want to tune into our intuition uh, and even these signs and synchronicities that we look for, they're, they can be so deeply powerful when we understand that they're meaningful, right? They're there. Yes, they're there to validate and show us that there is something deeper and more powerful going on in this world than we can imagine. But they're also there to as part of sort of signposts on our journey. They're there to highlight important moments, important thoughts, important decisions, pat us on the back when we've when we're in the right place, show us when we're not. So these are all extremely important in a deeply personal way. So I always encourage people to rely on their intuition, especially when it comes to things like manifestation. Because, you know, we hear all this talk about creating your vision board and, and, and manifesting all the things that you want. Well, let's step back before we do that and check in with our intuition. You know, uh, it's not just about our hopes and dreams, right? It's about our callings and listen to what our intuition is calling us to do from the inside. Instead of looking around on social media and saying, oh, well, this person does that. I want to have that. Or this person looks like they have a great life. I want to have that life, right? Because those are illusions. This is all part of the world of illusion. And we all only pretty much put our best self on in social media. So we don't see the true, the true self. So listening to our inner callings and our inner voices and where we're prompted to go from, from that inner guidance system will help us to stay on that path to wholeness. And, and what's on that path? Happiness, contentment, health, well-being, love, all of those things that we, we truly crave. Well, I would say that the signs of contrast that we see in the world right now, whether that's politically, socially, or even in healthcare, along with the beautiful lights in the sky that we have seen from the mm -hmm. sun flares, the signs point to vibration, resonance, and alignment. And I believe that that's the direction that we must all aspire to, is to really align to the highest state that we can. Can you speak about what vibration, resonance, and alignment have to do with intuition and really following our true callings? Absolutely. So these are really key uh, key aspects of really listening and aligning with our intuition. So 
uh, the intuitive information, you know, it's really stored in this quantum field in a very high vibration state. So in order for us to, to access it, right, we have to be in a state of peace, high vibration energy. And, uh, you know, there's some really interesting studies going on now with brain waves and, you know, what wavelengths are able to connect with it because it's like that old saying goes, oh, we need to be on the same wavelength. When you're on the same wavelength with a friend, you might be able to anticipate something they're going to say or communicate uh, non-locally with little uh, signs and synchronicities with each other. So a lot of magic that happens when you're on the same wavelength with other people, but it's the same way with your intuition. So when you get into that high vibration state, which is a state of peace and, and calm and openness, but also a state of power, right? It's not just a relaxed state. It's not just the the sort of quiet state of meditation. It's also a state of power and of, of, of creative power and knowing that it's part of this dualistic world we're living into that we can embrace our peace and also embrace the power that comes with that. So um, getting into this high vibration place where you can tap into your intuition is really key uh, to getting more of it. So think about it when you're, when you're feeling sick or you're like, you're really tired after a long day, your intuition isn't really there speaking clearly because you're, you're down and your energy's low and you're actually probably at that time more prone to negative thinking, more of those other voices in your head, the inner critic, the, the part of you that makes you feel less than. Um, but when you feel your, like your best self and you're full of energy and you're in that true state of, of self-actualization, that's when your intuition is there and it can kick in with these feelings of empowerment because that's the key with intuition. It's empowering. Even if it's not telling you what you want to hear, it will empower you to make the right choices, to get in the right directions, to get out of a rut, to come back to wholeness, to come into that beautiful place, that high vibration place of expansion, because ultimately the universe is expanding and it wants us to expand with it. So if we're not expanding and growing and filling our hearts with love and, and light and wisdom and, and creating a better world with each act and each thought, then we're not participating in this expansion. So that's why when we're in these sort of low energy states and we get into these ruts, um, you know, we don't feel good, right? Because, because that's not where we're meant to stay. Life is trying to nudge us out of these things and, and call us into that potential of growth and evolution that our intuition is always guiding us towards. The creative process is a state of union with our inner field. Inspiration and all that flows from it are part of the manifestation process of life itself. Being in the creative flow revitalizes our being as we participate in the process of growth and expansion. When you flow with the energy of life, you are in sync with your inner field. This coherent state aligns you with the truth so that you can act from a place of truth. When you create your life from a place of truth and the peace and power it holds, you can see at last that there are no real boundaries. There is only the way. This is from Kim Chesney's book, The Illumination Code, Seven Keys to Unlock Your Quantum Intelligence. You can find out more about her at intuition-lab.com, where she has workshops and classes to help serve your intuition and grow you in this profound way. You can also find out more about her other books, Radical Intuition and The Psychic Workshop. Again, this show has been The Illumination Code, Seven Keys to Unlock Your Quantum Intelligence. I invite you to get your copy today. Thanks so much, Kim, for being on 1111 Talk Radio. It was an absolute delight and pleasure. And until next week, I look forward to being with you again. I am Simran, in love, of love, with love, and as love. Be well. Thank you for opening your mind to a new reality, your heart to greater compassion, and your experience of aliveness with 1111 Talk Radio. Join host Simron next Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern Time to step through the gateway of conscious living here on the Voice America Empowerment Channel. Remember, you are not on the journey. You are the journey.